Hey folks, I'm headed out into the sagebrush so that I can make a flint and steel fire and cook some ash cakes. Hey, Maddie girl. Hey. Hi. And away we go. I haven't really used sagebrush for firewood before, so we'll see if it creates decent coals that allow me to cook on. Is, uh, the nearest trees are a couple of miles away, and walking through this snow for a couple miles ain't easy. So here we are, right ahead. So here's some firewood I gathered the other day. It should be nice and dry. And here's a little spot where the sagebrush has uh, blocked the snow. So we'll hunker down in here. Well, to begin with, it's getting pretty warm. So I'm gonna take off this vest and then we'll See if we can find some tender. Put my cup and spoon over there. My flour and salt here. And flint and steel kit. Right there. Now we'll take this and go uh, fill it with tender. When I'm gathering tender, I like to look for sagebrush one where it's on the underside of a large branch, thinking that uh, might have had less rain and snow falling on it. And two, I like to try to find the loose stuff so that I'm doing less damage to the bush and uh, hopes that it might not kill it or uh, hinder its growth. Let's see if this is good down here. Ah, uh, that's kind of wet. Yeah, here's some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So here we got some. A little bit of it's kind of damp, but we'll just see how that works. So here we go with our tender and then some next level up stuff I got. So we're gonna work this tender a little bit. See if we can get some of it fluffy. Get some hair-like pieces in there. And uh, see if it works. It's a little damp, so I may be out of luck. Back, that's extra damp right there, so I'm gonna pull that out. Starting to look pretty good. All right, so that's about four or five minutes into uh, roughing up this tinder. Let's see if that does the trick or not. All right, so let's pull out a little bit of char cloth and uh, The lid back on it. Let's see how this tender works out that I just done. I didn't spend a lot of time on it and uh, so we'll see. There we got one. Yep. Alrighty. Get it right in there with the soft stuff. Here we go.
Woo! I gotta put it down. All right, maybe it ain't gonna work. Let's see if we can compress it. It's getting too hot for me to hold. There it goes. Uh, so we'll just keep feeding this into it. Uh, let's see if we can get a roaring fire going. So I may have a fire, but we'll see if I actually can uh, cook on it. Speaking of cooking, with all this snow, I didn't bother to bring a, a canteen. So now I gotta melt water for my bread. And let that get down to ashes, coals, so I can cook on it. I think I'm going to be in luck. I think this is going to be great to cook on. Just got to wait for this water to melt. Now the thing I'm dealing with here, I don't need much water. Maybe a quarter of a cup is plenty. But my understanding is with 10, you got to have a lot of fluid in it or you can uh, melt out the soldering and it'll fall apart or start leaking. So I have to melt about 10 times more <coughs> snow than I really even need. So I got plenty of water. I'm going to start fishing out some of this ice. So I think I got more than enough water. All right, that is completely melted. Normally to do bread, you have the dry ingredients first, but I don't really have that luxury as I only have one bowl, my cup. And second of all, I found if you add extra salt, it makes this plain bread taste well, actually, I enjoy it with enough salt. So, there I'm mixing it up as best I can before it gets into the water. And there we go. Now I'm just mixing away. Ideally, you want this to come out dry enough that you mix it with your hands. And you can make a ball out of it. It looks like I might have done that just right. So I, what I do, I stick my hands in there and start kneading it while it's in the cup. Oh yeah. And then when I've got it in a ball, it's not too sticky. I go ahead and pull it out. Whoops, that's a sticky part. And then uh, just knead it here a little bit. Doesn't take much. I'm just flatten it out into some of that. And look at those coals. This is beautiful. So. so 
So the thinner you make it, the quicker it'll cook. This is about a cup of flour and about a teaspoon or a little more, a teaspoon and a half of salt. And just throw it right there on the ashes. I'd like to give a shout out to Townsend's and company. They're the ones that showed me how to make the uh, ash cakes. And I've been experimenting since then. At home when I'm making them, I add a little bit of olive oil. But um, I'll put the link down there. You can find that if you'd like. They're a great, great YouTube channel to follow if you're into this kind of stuff. They focus on 18th century a little more. But uh, a lot of that I can still use. Oh yeah, that lit up some coals right underneath my bread. There, it's cooking. One thing I know is that it's pretty simple to cook and comes out. It usually comes out pretty nicely as long as you get heat to it for the right amount of time. I think I got something here that I can eat. Yeah, it looks like it cooked through okay, and that's what's important. And just wipe off some of the excess grit. Careful not to burn my mouth here. Let's see how it tastes. Yeah good if you like this kind of thing and want to support me doing it uh, hit like and subscribe I'd be very grateful and uh, let me know in the comments all right folks thanks